Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca, otherwise known as Hypnit Hooray Online. And today I will be chatting about some spring knitting trends uh, and inspiration. So this video was a little bit unexpected for, for me. I was sitting down and thinking about uh, upcoming knitting plans for my uh, spring knitting plans with stash yarn video that is a type of video that i've liked to make every season since i started my channel just talking about um i guess it's self-explanatory in the, in the title but what my plans are and then what yarn and stash i can use to make them so i was sitting down and thinking about the plans and i realized that there were some common themes and trends that i was seeing um, when i was looking at upcoming designs new pattern releases things that i wanted to make so i was initially going to add that to the beginning of that video and just talk a little bit about the trends i was seeing but the list or what i was noticing kept getting longer and longer and i think it would just make the video too long so i've decided to separate it out into a new video um, it was unexpected because I don't really see, like, I, I don't think I have that eye to look at upcoming trends, whether it be in uh, the fashion industry at large or within the knitting community. Uh, I definitely like to follow trends or like I definitely see myself um, looking at trends and being inspired by them but I always felt like I never really could spot them myself or look ahead and see what are some things that will be trending in the future. So I just kind of thought that I would never make this type of video, but I do like watching them on YouTube from my favorite podcasters. So this isn't going to be a regular thing on my channel. I don't think I, I can do this every season, but um, I just was noticing them particularly for this spring 2024 season. So I thought, I'll sit down and we'll chat about them. So I'm going to be sharing some designs that have been released in the past few uh, weeks or a few months, um, some that are still in testing and some that are still in pattern making development, but will be released over the spring season. This isn't going to be a deep dive into the pattern specifically. Like I'm just going to give a very brief description of what they are, who the designer is, because I want the focus of the video to be more about the themes themselves. So uh, I think that's enough of an introduction and let's get started with the themes. So the first trend is textured knit cardigans. Uh, I think textured knits are becoming really popular and cardigans as well. So I don't really know which one came first, but both of them together have become a pretty trendy uh, design this, this year. Um, I released a textured uh, knit cardigan pattern inspiration video. So I was sharing some uh, textured cardigans that I was really inspired by and that I really want to knit and since that video there's been several other pattern releases of textured knit cardigans how many times can I say textured knit cardigans so I have this theory as to why maybe textured knit cardigans are pretty popular among knitters or why people may be more incentivized to knit them over textured sweaters um, and it's because I think it's a pretty popular opinion that people don't like the purl stitch <laughs> And when you're knitting stocking it in the round, you're just using knit stitch uh, and it's pretty relaxing. It's, it's pretty mindless. Um, but when you are knit, knitting cardigans, unless you're steaking them, uh, you have to knit one row and then purl back. So I think I personally don't like that. I don't, I don't find it very um, relaxing. If, you just can't really get into a groove. So if I have to knit uh, both knit and purl stitches, uh, I would rather it be textured and have some visual interest. So that's why I think I'm really attracted to them. I don't know if others maybe feel the same, but that's just my little inkling. <laughs> um, and so there's been a ton of pattern releases uh, the past few weeks that use an all over textured stitch. So there's some that use like knit and purl stitches. So I'll, I'll name a few right now that I've been seeing on my Instagram feed. The first is the fennel seed jacket by uh, Handmade by Florence. That is a raglan top down cardigan knit with an all over broken rib stitch texture. Um, there's the Esther jacket by Petite Knit, which was part of the Sagar's archives collection. That's a top down drop shoulder cardigan and it uses both knits and pearls to create this geometric diamond pattern design. 
uh, that one I am really inspired by. And then the third uh, that came out recently is the Ingrid Cardigan by Gregoria Fibers. And I think the Ingrid series is pretty, um, it's been pretty popular in the knitting community from Gregoria Fibers. I've knit the Ingrid top and it is um, a really fun knit, that textured design. It's um, uh, an eyelet design or a garter stitch eyelet design, I want to call it. Uh, but she has a, a series of other patterns with the same stitch texture and she came out with the cardigan, which is a top down drop shoulder cardigan. There's also some cable cardigan patterns that I've been seeing from Sorry Nordland, and I feel like whenever I am interested in knitting something cabled, I will always look to Sorry Nordland because I feel like she comes out with some really stunning cabled designs. Um, one of them has been released, I think just last week since at the time of filming this video, it's the Mila cardigan. She also came out with the Mila sweater, uh, but the Mila cardigan is a top down all over cabled sweater as well. Uh, I think that that cable design is really stunning and I went to um, Barcelona I guess a year and a half ago now and I remember being really inspired by that house and, and really enjoying that texture so it's kind of cool to pay a little bit of a homage to that and, and knit this cardigan. Um, and then the book club cardigan which I think is going to be in testing soon but I think this is a really stunning cardigan. It's again an all over um, cabled cardigan with pockets which I always really like um, but yeah I've been seeing a ton of all over textured knit cardigans and those are just a few that have popped into my Instagram feed. Continuing on with textured knits another thing that I've been seeing is textured knit socks. Um, I I think this is a bit challenging for me because I have just started to knit socks. I've knit one pair of socks before. Uh, and so while I should probably really get into knitting more vanilla socks, uh, simple stockinette socks, just to understand more of stitch or sock construction, I've been seeing so many textured socks out there that have been released. And so I've been really inspired. I think that they're fun to knit because they're smaller projects. You can kind of experiment a little bit more with stitch patterns because you'll finish them quicker. So the first is the Salen Socks by Emma's Knits and this has a triangular uh, textured pattern all around the leg of the sock. Emma came out with the Salen Top last year and so this is the same stitch pattern that's translated into a sock format. Uh, the next one is the Tikba Socks by Lydia Barber. Um, this one again has the textured uh, stitch all over the leg of the sock. It has a hurdle stitch, I think is what it is when I was looking at it. That one looks really fun to knit up as well. Uh, Summer Lee Knits has come up with a few cabled knit uh, sock patterns um, in the last few weeks as well. I think there's a third one that was just released recently, but the two that I saw that I came across were the Hibernal Socks, which is a faux cable and rib stitch texture um, all over the sock, the Leap Year Socks, which is a slip stitch and garter texture. This one I think is actually a free pattern as well through her newsletter. Uh, a similar sock pattern by Handmade by Florence to the Hibernal socks is the Mountain Walk Chunky socks. That one also features faux cables and rib as well. Um, this one, Handmade by Florence or Florence already came out with a fingering weight version and this is just a heavier weight, chunkier version. And finally, this one isn't a sock pattern, but it's still footwear. Uh, it's the Nomad Slippers by Will & Beyond. Um, this has an all over texture honeycomb brioche stitch and it looks really fun to knit. I don't know if I would attempt these until maybe I get a little bit more experience at knitting honeycomb brioche just looking at the uh, construction but they look really fun and they're a very unique uh, uh, pattern piece. I feel like there's not that many knit slippers out there so that was really cool and that was also recently released as well. The next knitting trend I've been seeing is graphic color work. And I think this has been heavily influenced by the Isagar Archives collection. Um, I believe Isagar partners with designers once a year, maybe twice a year on a pattern collection that has a similar theme. So last year it was the Breeze collection, which took the knitting world by storm. And then this year it's the Archives collection. And the Archives collection is um, 
based off of Isagar's vintage patterns, I think from the 70s and 80s, and the designers looked at those patterns and then had a more modern take or a revival of the, the pattern through this archives collection. Uh, and so a lot of them I noticed were some fun color work, uh, but as I was saying with ar the archives collection, it's based off of vintage patterns. So I've been seeing a lot of both vintage and modern color work type motifs. Uh, so with the more traditional uh, color work pieces, I've been seeing the Norma sweater by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This one, the sample uses some really fun retro colors. Um, and I just think the design is, is pretty simple to work up, uh, but a really striking uh, look. There's the Carla Cape and Cardigan pattern by Ann Vensel that was also part of the archives collection. It has a very traditional geometric shape to it, and I think it looks very elegant. I was really intrigued by this pattern. I'm actually thinking of making it, not this uh, season, but maybe later on down the road because it uses mosaic knitting, which I haven't, or mosaic color work, which I haven't done before. And that is where you can knit color work, but only use one color at a time by using slip stitches. So I really want to try that technique and I really like the look of the Carla cape. Uh, there is the Joanna loop sweater by Other Loops and that is another retro color work motif. Uh, I was looking at the hashtag and I saw some of the samples use a more low contrast um, color combination which I think looks really cool and then there's some more um, bold color work choices that are a little bit more striking. And that was again per the um, archives collection and then the other traditional uh, color work sweater that I've been seeing uh, that's in testing right now is the opal sweater by Osetta. This one is a little bit different than the other ones that I mentioned. It has color work just on the sleeves and again it has a very geometric shape to them. The sweater is a raglan construction and I think it's a really fun pretty quick knit because it is a raglan and stockinette stitch. Uh, but then you have the fun color work detail on the sleeves and I think that's a really great way to use up scraps. So that's also going to be coming this spring as well. Uh, and then two more modern color work patterns that uh, are a new design or new pattern release is the Heartcore Slipover by Clara Eggers. Um, I really love this heart geometric design. I think it's really cute. She has a version for kid sizes and then she just came out with one for adults. So I really like the stitch um, pattern. I think it's really fun. Um, and I think it's a really great way to, again, use up scraps as well and play with color. And the second pattern is the Stitches Sweater by Kuta Vakika. I think this pattern is really modern and really funny. I have a few uh, t-shirts that have knitting puns on them and I love wearing them. And I think this one is really, really fun and, and literal to have the word stitches all across the sweater. I think, I don't really see a lot of color work designs with words. I wonder if it's because it's a bit more challenging to grade sizes with a word motif um, across the sweater. So maybe that's, that's why, but when designers are able to achieve them, I think that they're really fun and I'd love to knit the sweater. The next trend is not really a knitwear item itself, but it's something that you would add to knitwear. It is uh, toggle or horn buttons. I've been seeing these everywhere on new pattern designs and releases. Uh, and I, I know that like buttons are not new to knitwear at all, but I just haven't really been seeing this shape used before in previous designs. And I think that there's something like very traditional about toggle buttons. It reminds me of a lot of like vintage sweaters. Um, or vintage jackets, but also it, they add a lot of visual interest to a piece. I think that they're really striking um, and I just haven't really seen them done before until until this year. So uh, the first is the Eurosfest and the Haraboji Cardigan by Egyo Knit. So for the Eurosfest, there's a button closure along the side. Um, it's tied together with two uh, or it's connected together with two toggle buttons. And I feel like this is definitely more of like a design element to add visual interest. Um, with a slip over, I feel like it's not necessary to have a button closure along the side, but I feel like it adds a lot to the, to the slip over. And then there's the Haraboji cardigan um, that has the toggle buttons on the front as well. And I've been seeing a lot of versions that have a contrasting toggle button to the 
uh, yarn color and I think that that just makes them look even more striking. Uh, the second is the cardigan number no. nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear that also features toggle buttons on the front. Uh, and that is a top-down cardigan with a saddle shoulder. So I'm really intrigued by this pattern design. Uh, I really like saddle shoulders and I really like toggle buttons. So really um, inspired by this piece this season. And the last pattern that I wanted to talk about in this trend is the Texture Vest by Helga Isager. This, I believe, is also part of the Isager's Archives collection, and this is an all-over textured vest achieved through knits and pearls. This one is actually knit from the bottom up, so not my favorite construction, <laughs> but I think that it's really fun. It uses horn buttons, which is a little bit different than the toggle buttons, but same kind of vibe, but chunkier button. Uh, so as I mentioned, this one is knit bottom up and it features a really fun collar as well on the top. And the last trend that I want us to talk about are V-neck lines. So to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of V-neck sweaters for two reasons. The first is I find that they are a little bit too casual, so I struggle to style them. Um, they're definitely very cozy and comfortable to wear. Like I just finished my sweater number 14 V-neck, which I love wearing. Um, around the house is like a loungewear piece or when I'm working from home, I just want another layer on. So I really like them for that purpose, but I struggle to kind of dress them up when I want to uh, wear them outside uh, other than wearing uh, the, the sweater with like a pair of jeans and sneakers. I find that I can't really dress them up and wear them to work or anything like that. Just a little bit more limited. And then the second reason is I find that um, I'm very cold when I wear them unless I wear another layer underneath <laughs> because of the, the V neckline. So I usually am always wearing it with like a higher neck t-shirt or tank top. So again, there's a, only a limited number of ways that I like to wear the V-neck sweater. So I don't really see a need to have so many in my wardrobe. I prefer a crew neck, but I have been seeing a lot of designers knit V-neck sweaters lately, whether it be like a new pattern design or a V-neck version of a previous pattern that they have before. I'll, I'll get into them in the next few moments. Um, so it's nice, I think, to have those different options. I probably am not going to knit that many more just because I have a few already now and I don't really wear them that much. But yeah, nice to have an option. I've been seeing it a ton lately. So the first one I wanted to talk about is the Ella sweater by Knits by Summer. This is a uh, top-down drop shoulder sweater that has a very chunky v-neck. It's, it's actually very unique, I think, compared to other v-neck cardigans that I've seen where the v-neck sits up quite high and it's very thick. So uh, my issue of being really cold when I wear v-necks might be solved with uh, this pattern design. And that was released, um, I think, a few months ago now, but it was really popular when I saw it on my feed. The next pattern is the Lakes Pullover V-neck by Ozetta. And I've knit the Lakes Pullover before and I really love the fit. I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite saddle shoulder construction because it's not contiguous like other saddle shoulder um, sweaters can be. You knit two panels, uh, horizontal panels, and then you pick up at the back and the front and then that's how you get that saddle shoulder shape. Uh, but that being said, I do really like the look of that thicker saddle shoulder, which I think that's how that has to be achieved with that construction. I really like the look. I think it's very striking and it's an interesting knit. So um, Haley, I believe, released that Lakes Pullover in 2022, I want to say, late 2022. Um, and she's now designed a v-neck version that is... Um, she just hinted at the design in these past few weeks on Instagram. The testing period hasn't started at the time of me filming this, but it will be starting, I think, soon. So it will be a upcoming pattern in the spring that I really am inspired by and I'm interested in because I loved my Lakes uh, original pullover when that was uh, released. The next design I wanted to share is also another v-neck version of a previous design. It is the Grayling v-neck sweater by Natonomy. This one has a pretty deep v-neck. Um, personally, I don't think I would knit this. I think I'd prefer the original Grayling sweater, um, but it's nice to have a v-neck version if other knitters are interested in knitting that design. And I do really like the look of these chunkier cables. I think it's really striking. And then the last pattern uh, is the Oatmeal Sweater by Kutafakika. This is an all-over cabled and textured stitch 
knit sweater. It looks really fun and cozy to work up. And again, there's the v-neck uh, neckline. So those were all of the spring trends that I've been seeing the past few months. I think it's all very exciting, like the textured knits and color work. It's something a little bit different and um, I've been really inspired by all of them. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be filming my spring knitting plans with stash yarn video where I'm going to be knitting a few of the patterns that I mentioned uh, today, but also some new ones with stash yarn. So uh, we'll be filming that shortly. Uh, but yeah, let me know down below if there are any other uh, knitting trends that you've been noticing that I've missed. I'd love to know. I think everyone's Instagram algorithm is a little bit different. You're served different photos and, and design. So I'd love to know if there are any other trends that I haven't seen, but you've come across uh, down below. And with that, I will see you in my next video.